with light where complex um, patterns such as faces and symmetry were denoted in our primary visual cortex, we can also denote complex stimuli in our temporal lobe. And when it comes to things like voices, we can detect things like emotion or intonation, and it becomes even more complex when those voices are put to music. Perhaps one of the most complex things that we can process in our auditory nervous system is our musical perception. This is not a music theory course, but just briefly, uh, we know that things like rhythm and tempo, they could be parallel to when we think about patterns in light. Just so you can see like textures or checkers or what have you in, in light, rhythm is really the pattern of sound. And so we can t pick up on those patterns and tempo could really be the speed or the complexity or the density of those patterns. Then we have melody and harmony, and they could really be parallels in light to contrast. Melody is really considered the horizontal contrast and harmony is the vertical contrast. Uh, so one of the ways I like to explain it is melody is when you're listening to a piece of music, uh, does the notes, do the notes fit? Are they kind of expected? or are they largely contrasting and unexpected? Uh, and harmony is more the vertical. And this is if you think about like a quartet of different singers, do they do those different uh, singing in different octaves? Do they layer upon each other nicely? Uh, and so those are the different contrasts in music. Also in music, we have things like uh, consonants and dissonance. Although they've never been formally defined, uh, they can be used to describe the emotionality of music. Consonance is often considered to be uh, a chord that sounds sweet. Uh, so two notes when played together, they sound sweet, they make a happy sort of emotionality in music. It's different from the major minor scales, but dissonance is often uh, a type of displacement in the notes where they kind of give a jarring sense. We hear more dissonance in horror films, we hear more consonance in romance, uh, and they give this emotionality. Now, much like in visual perception, when some individuals are not able to visualize information uh, with agnosia, we have amusia. And so amusia in auditory perception is the idea, not just that a person is tone deaf or doesn't have perfect pitch, but rather they have a hard time hearing the differences in music. They have a hard time hearing different pitches, have a hard time detecting melodies. Um, and they have this, this lack of ability to, to hear. We also have acoustic agnosia, where individuals may be unable to hear a song in their head. We've, many of us have experienced earworms or catchy songs um, that have certain musical properties that make them more catchy, uh, but some individuals are unable to hear a song in their head. Now, just like we have depth perception in our visual perception, we also have depth in our auditory, and this is called sound localization. So it's how we perceive the nearness or far awayness of sound. And some of us are pretty good or pretty terrible at this as well. We know that human infants are pretty good, uh, just as good as adults on average. If you lie a baby on a table and you have a series of five or seven speakers around them and you play a tone from one of the speakers, they'll turn their head to the speaker in which the tone came from, showing that they could localize it. We use lots of different cues to localize sound, uh, some of them using two ears or binaural and some of them using one ear or monooral. Uh, and so this is the idea that we, we try and locate it. So this is whether there's a dripping faucet or you hear a siren, uh, we're constantly using these cues to locate things around us. And sometimes uh, the thing we're trying to locate is moving locations. When a sound source is moving, uh, the direction it's moving to is actually squishing the sound waves. And so when a car or a siren is coming towards us, uh, it'll be at a higher frequency. And that's because the wavelengths are being condensed and there'll be more high frequency in a small space. Versus when a car or a siren is moving away from us, it'll be perceived as a lower frequency as the sound waves are being stretched as it's moving. So because not all sound sources are completely static and, and stay in the same spot, we are adept at understanding when things are moving around us by closing your eyes. So if you hear footsteps coming towards you versus away, they may sound a little bit different. Now, just like with vision, we also have perceptual illusions in sound. Uh, some of the very classic ones are phoneme ambiguity. We find that in spoken speech, there's a lot of phonemes that sound very similar. For example, the letter T and the letter D can sound very similar. Uh, and so if you were to not have words in a certain context, you may think people are saying T when they're really saying duh. Or B and P sound similar. So ba 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 versus pa pa pa. 
Uh, this became very popular in a uh, viral sensation a couple years ago with uh, a speech clip where somebody was either saying Yanny or Laurel. And what was going on is the way we make L's and Y's in our lips, Laurel, where you put your tongue versus Yanny, where you put your tongue, it's very similar. It's very similar. And so then all that was happening was were the vowels up or were the vowels down? If you heard the vowels up, eh, you would perceive it as Y's, Yanny. But if you heard the vowels as lower, Laurel, you perceive the consonant as an L. So the consonants Y and L could flex uh, based on if you perceive the, the vowels as higher or lower. There's all kinds of other illusions we have not to do with speech, but just with tones themselves. And one of them is uh, the tritone paradox, otherwise known as Shepard's tone illusion. And this is the infinitely increasing tone. This is the idea you can hear tones constantly increasing. Uh, and this is done through a bit of a, a cool illusion where there's actually three tones layered over each other. And so there's decreasing and increasing tones played simultaneously and they're repeated. But when you hear it, it constantly sounds like the tones are going up, 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 but they're not. It's, it's the same tone you're hearing over and over and over again.